in our lifetime. Only a few leave a mark. But as one Maryland Heights woman found, some of those people simply refuse to be forgotten. She says she's been stalked by a stranger. Investigative reporter PJ Randawa finds out why the courts, police, even judges haven't been able to protect her. In high school, Paula Frey had it all. Looks, friends, a future full of possibilities. Two decades later. I had a good job, we were comfortable, we were happy. And um, I was planning on going to my 20 year reunion. A time to reconnect with Pattonville's class of 1990. A sea of smiling faces, many she remembered, and one she couldn't quite place. I just said, hi, how are you? A fellow graduate who didn't leave much of an impression. I really don't remember him from school. But Brandon McCormick remembered her. All I did was be nice. And now for nine years, I have lived in hell. Nearly a decade of unwanted attention after one brief encounter. It was almost immediate. At one point, he sat by the house. I was like, what are you doing? Why are you here? Stalking her and her family. He rides his bike past my house. Um, his car, rollerblades, walks, stalks, lurks. And he was taking pictures of my home, and he had taken pictures of the girls. Police reports requested by the I-Team show McCormick was diagnosed with schizophrenia and had stopped taking his medication. Letters written to the court by his own family expressed fear that McCormick could hurt himself and others. A St. Louis County judge granted Paula an order of protection in 2012, and she still has one to this day, but she says it hasn't stopped the stalking. It's always, it won't stand up in court. He hasn't done anything to cause you harm. We asked Maryland Heights police why none of these incidents were enough to arrest McCormick. So Paula wants to know, is she going to have to end up dead in the back of a trunk before police, the courts, take this case seriously? We haven't seen anything in this particular case that would uh, give us a reason to believe that he could become violent. But the I-team found there is evidence that McCormick could be a danger, and this evidence was already in the hands of the courts. Over the past two years, McCormick was writing dozens of letters to the judges overseeing Paula's protection orders. McCormick admits to hearing voices lurking outside Paula's home and, most shocking, claims to have molested his own young relatives. To know. That that's the actual monster you're dealing with is a little scary. It's a little scary. Paula didn't know about the letters until an attorney requested her case file. Why did the judge never tell Paula or tell the police about what was in these letters or the fact they even existed? All I can tell you is that the Supreme Court rules preclude judges from considering any communications from one side because they have to remain neutral. The judges never read the letters and neither did police. I, I think it would have been uh, nice to have an idea that this was continuing to the level that it was. Police tell the I-team the case will get a second look. Do you plan on investigating some of the claims in these letters? I, I think it'd be worthy of, of doing investigation. You know. Encouraged but not convinced, Paula fears McCormick will never be held accountable. Anything that he does, he has a defense, and it's insanity. Her life never truly her own. I don't understand why in the last nine years it has always been. He has to do something to physically harm me or my daughter for anyone to listen. Well, Paula isn't the only one who says she's been stalked by McCormick. Another classmate filed for an order of protection against him after that same high school reunion. A judge also recently ordered McCormick to wear an electronic monitoring bracelet. PJ, this has been going on for nine years. Mm -hmm. She said he, in all different ways, goes by the house. So how has she dealt with this? And she, she said the girl, so I assume she has daughters at Yeah, home. she does have children. So she's had to move multiple times, and her daughter's only 13 years old. So she's had to deal with this for most of her life and look over her shoulder. Uh, luckily, with that electronic monitoring bracelet, it's giving them a little bit of hope that they can get back to a normal life. All right, PJ, thank you. Have some.